Welcome to a special episode of the All the Books Show recorded at the David A. Howe Public Library where we talk book news, author news, and literary news. I'm Eric Mickles. And I'm Nick Gunning. And today we have a special author interview. I'll say we do. Yeah, we're very excited about this one. This this week we got the opportunity to sit down and chat with Grammy Award winning musician, author, and shiny shoe enthusiast, Mr. Michael Nesmith. So it was, a, it was a great pleasure to talk to him. If you're not familiar with his work, pause the podcast, run out, uh, listen to and read everything, and then come back. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, just for a brief bio, Mike Nesmith first rose, rose to prominence as a member of the Monkees, uh, and then went on to do a trio of very successful, very cool albums with the first national band, uh, continued on with a successful solo career, has branched out into television, film, early music videos, uh, of course, writing. He's the author of three books, the first of which, The Long Sandy Hair of Neptune Zamora, is going to be the topic of our discussion today. It's also the topic of a new book club that Mike Nesmith's uh, website and Facebook Video Ranch 3D is doing online. So if you've only heard the music, now's your chance to listen to the man. Let's just start with the basics. So your website, VideoRanch3D.com, is starting this new uh, book club on your first novel, The Long Sandy Hair of Neptune Zamora. And I wondered if you could just tell us a little bit about the book itself and about uh, uh, how you how you came, came to write it. Well, um, Zamora, as you probably know, is the first novel that I ever wrote. Sure. And and I and I'd been I had that um, I had that itch for years to write a book. Really. But knew but yeah yeah yeah. But I knew for years that I didn't know how to write a book. Didn't have a clue. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, the best thing to do is just try to write one. And so what you see in Long Sandy Hair is me trying to write a book. Okay. But I'm I'm. I'm happy to tell you that I'm quite satisfied with uh, Neptune Zamora. It, it contains ideas that were uh, that were apropos to what I was doing at the time. I was I was with uh, a, a different kind of group of people, and the people that I was with at the time were uh, they didn't know how to start a book club. They were not literary. I don't mean that as a pejorative. I just sure. mean it. You know, they didn't read and. They didn't, and we didn't. We don't really have. Well, I guess we do. We have the Carmel Valley Library, which ha, which has a book club, <clears throat> and there were some pings after the book came out, but nothing ever happened as far as people gathering together. And <clears throat> I just left it alone. Um, and once the book was finished, I thought, well, how do I get this out there? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> and the very daunting idea of self publishing came up in my head. And um, I had enough resources to do that and, and talent and money. And so I thought, well, just put it, you know, just put it out yourself and, and see where it leads and be prepared to answer the questions. So <clears throat> I opened the door to greet the howling winds and the blowing snow. And I thought, oh, shit, I don't <laughs> want to go out in that. <clears throat> but it was, uh, it was you know, the, the whoever, whoever was... <laughs> Whoever was sent as my guide, you know, <laughs> handed me my snowshoes and said, "This is the only way." <laughs> so that was good. I didn't have a, I didn't have the uh, the uh, chief editor of Doubleday call me. I had uh, you know the chief editor of my left foot call me. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> I ventured out, and I thought to myself, you know, this is not the way to sell a book, and you got some good ideas in this book. And if you want to protect them, don't throw them out in the snow. Right. But <clears throat> I didn't really have a choice. And I just thought, I'm going to depend on people who read the book to pass the message along. Not having any real good sense that I was talking about light years. And that it would be, you know, I was I was light years away from the nearest star. Sure. Not, I mean, the nearest planet, not to mention <laughs> the nearest star. Right. And so I thought, well, just take a deep breath and suck it up, and somebody's going to come along and say, hey, man, this is a good book. And sure enough, uh, the first person that did was uh, was uh, an editor at St. Martin's Press. I'm doing that right, St. Martin's Press, ladies. It was St. Martin's Press, right? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And um, she gave me a, you know, a nickel advance <laughs> and uh, said, uh, good luck. <laughs> And then she quit. <laughs> so, so I had a new guy at St. Martin's Press who <clears throat> I I carried around the idea for a while that maybe he was not uh, in a in a 
wasn't sober when he called, but <clears throat> he was smart enough, and he was asking salient questions, and he asked some real ticklers, I mean, some real tough questions, and I started to get the confidence up in the way I had written it, and I was, you know, particularly um, interested in writing about music. Um, I wanted to... Um, try to write down the experience I had playing and the experience that I had listening and to see if I had done that well. And the, and, and I was depending on, I, I don't want to call them reviews, but just, you know, the, the general public saying, uh, I read that and it really, you know, framed something up for me. Yeah. And now I understand what you're talking about when you say the blues, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> sure enough, that started to happen. Um, Sadly, to my dismay, the the, the company the, the, that I was keeping and the company that I had built and so forth really wasn't ready to pull that together. I had a few oh, people that were, but they weren't, you know, and so when I had a little bit of success, no, no, it wasn't success. It was just, you know, it was a curious, morbid interest. <laughs> 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 and so when they came, started to come on and say, oh, this is good. I just thought, well, this is all you got. Take it to the bank, and um, and I did. And <clears throat> in doing that, I started to comb and rinse the book, not with an idea towards editing it, but just to see, you know, if there was some place that was just idiotic. Mm -hmm. And I came away with it, which I didn't realize what I was doing was doing, you know, the edit for print. But <clears throat> I, I, you know, in doing the comb and rinse, even after it was printed, I was thinking this is good, this holds up, and so mm -hmm. forth. And the first place I published it, ironically, was the net. Oh, okay. I put it out as an, H yeah, I put it out as an HTML. Because I could write HTML, sure. and I could put maps and pictures and stuff, and, and it really got very, very hard, and I got distracted. And so there are a few pieces laying around my uh, workshop which are part of the Neptune saga. Oh, okay. And 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 they have not been exploited because I don't know how to do it. I've got <laughs> much I have much better people working for me now. The um, the woman that started the book club, a woman named Melody Akers, uh, really did a fantastic job, I think. I've been reading, you know, the stuff that's been coming in and the people that are talking about the books and the way she structured it on Facebook went way beyond my pay grade and so i'm <laughs> really grateful to her for what, great. the way the way it came <clears throat> came along but what's not there <clears throat> i have maps and i have like like for instance i have a picture of the little horse diner oh okay and, <clears throat> which i made yeah I, I i made it in uh in uh uh, Photoshop, and it's not a good picture, but it's it is a picture, and so you know you you've got that. And I thought I don't want to make a graphic novel, but I think right. there are ways to bring this thing to life with pictures. And it made me sort of want to do a graphic novel. And I met a guy who whose name I forget, and and was a <clears throat> was a noted graphic novel writer and and drawer. And he was interested in maybe jumping on board and doing something with me. And I'm an idiot <laughs> for having forgotten his name and not knowing how to get in touch with him now. So if you're reading this, Mr. Nom 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 Nom, nom <laughs> please give me a call. <laughs> well, I think that would be really interesting because the, the type of story that it is and the, the journey that the character's on, I think would lend itself really well to the format of a graphic novel. So that, that would be well, interesting thanks. if that ever comes to fruition. Yeah, that's encouraging to me to hear you say that. Um, I also wrote a screenplay. Really? Which exists. Yeah, which exists. And if I do say so myself, uh, it's good. And and uh, and I thought, well, maybe I can get this movie made. Well, ha ha ha. <laughs> that's not that's not going to happen in my lifetime, which is okay. But <clears throat> I wrote the screenplay anyway, and it's really good. And I would love to shoot, you know, a, a, a three minute segment of yeah. it somewhere and put it up. And I think. That there's something in every novel, those those bits and shards and scraps that you leave around the office and your desk, all go into creating the novel. So that I did not know when mm. I made a decision to write it. I thought, I'm going to have to sit out here and completely write it and edit it 
and make sure I don't misspell anything. And I think this may be a bigger mountain that I can climb. But sure enough, it turned out to be an easygoing mountain like Mount Shasta or one of those, you know, kind of easy slopes mm -hmm. or Mount Fuji <clears throat> that you can get up and you don't need oxygen. And so I went ahead and made the climb and it was, um, and, and it's been really rewarding. And I feel like it's starting to, um, realize itself mm -hmm. and if i ever get the chance to go and, and and sweep together the the graphics and the little side stories like for instance <clears throat> i wrote all of the pamphlets that uh nez sees in the little horse diner okay and it, you know uh, uh, I, i've forgotten the name of them but you know what is a wife right <laughs> right and, and and what is a such and such they, I, they, I patterned them after it may be Mormon propaganda or something that that exists in every diner in New Mexico, <laughs> uh, along along with a little game that you play by jumping over stones and ending up with one one pin in the middle. Yeah, which is you know yeah I've never been able to do that ever, <laughs> and and so uh, uh, it, it, it there were also these little pamphlets that were around. So I took a I took a course in how to write one. <laughs> And I wrote all of them. Oh, there, you know, there are like six or seven of them that exist, and they are, they're really funny. I did them as a joke. Well, <laughs> no, joke is the wrong word, but I did them for the funny. Yeah, yeah. Know, I did them for the humor. <laughs> and if you'll forgive me, I really think they're very, very funny. But <clears throat> I'm also one of three people that have ever read them, so... <laughs> The, uh, uh, we'll see where that we'll see where that goes. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. By to hear. way of saying, you know, there every book comes with a set of outriggers, sure. and you just take it, take a look at the weather and the ocean, and you say, okay, well, I'll put this outrigger there and this there, and then you set sail, and and that's where you find me in the middle of you know kind of nowhere <laughs> and wondering <laughs> wondering how I got here with Neptune. Yeah, yeah. But just depending. Yeah, just depending on it to get me home. So, well, it doesn't surprise me that you that you did some of these extra steps because one of the things that I found reading the novel was I felt like the diner and the, the mystical city, all the different places that he goes, feel they feel very thorough and, and and thought out. Like you you really can picture those places. So I think that oh good good I think that that extra work you did really it pays off in the novel. Well, I do too. I mean, if I was teaching a, a, a course in in writing a novel, I would say, you know, first thing you have to do is visualize the yeah, damn yeah. thing, <clears throat> and uh, that's what I did. Uh, I have a very clear picture of uh, Neptune Zamora. I was married to a gorgeous woman who was six foot plus at at the time, and she inspired me. She was beautiful. She was an ex model, and well, I think that would make her mad. <laughs> she, <laughs> she is a model, and uh, and uh, she. Um, uh, we're, we're no longer a couple, but uh, she inspired me. I, I, I was uh, taken with her, and, and I, I really got a lot from her because of the way she looked. And so I tried to keep that in mind for uh, Neptune, mm -hmm. but that very quickly went away. First of all, uh, Victoria's not a blonde. <laughs> and second of all, you know, she's not an Indian. Right, so, right. <laughs> But but I had Neptune very clearly in my mind when I started to write, and I was by the time I wrote the first two pages, I was crazy mad in love with Neptune Zamora. <laughs> so I thought, this is yeah, yeah. I want to hang out with this woman. This is where is she somewhere? And I know she's not in New Mexico. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, I don't actually know that, but <clears throat> there you go. Well, what I I want to talk a little bit about about your writing process because all the things you're saying about the novel, I think. You know, you can see that in your lyrics as well. They 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 give you they're very evocative. You know, they they tell a story. So you know whether whether it's lyrics or or your liner notes, I I've always found your writing to be thoughtful and literary. So it makes perfect sense to me that that you would further develop that into a novel. But my question yeah. is, you know, is that is that all coming from the same place? You know, like how how does your approach differ when you're when you're saying, okay, I'm going to sit down and figure out how to write a novel versus I'm going to sit down and write this album. Like how how do those differ? <clears throat> well, uh, th that's a very sa that's a salient question. Um, um, I've been trying to purge my speech from the from the modifier "very" ever since Trump was elected. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I figure he said enough "varies" for all of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I think the, we've um, had our fill. The, <clears throat> but uh, but but I, it it is true. I think that all novels live in the mind before they live on the page. Absolutely. 
And so while they're in the mind, we can draw from them um, their uh, their physical expressions, not physical, but the metaphysical expressions mm -hmm. that define them. <clears throat> and that was the way that, uh, that I came into it. Um, and it was by that process, I was able to keep it artistic and poetic <clears throat> because um, beautiful pictures in my mind rhyme. Mm -hmm. uh, rhyme in the very in the very literary sense okay. of the word rhyme, you know, yeah, like time and rhyme. Sure. Right? <laughs> and if you look for it, um, you know, standing at the edge of an ocean or at the edge of a beautiful field or something, that you'll always see it. I'm using the you there as a generic, and I know there are a lot of people who say I don't ever see that, but <clears throat> I do, and I and I know a lot of really fine authors. Uh, Douglas Adams was my best friend until he died. And uh, for the last ten years of his life, and he and I discussed this a lot. I think uh, I think Douglas's best book is uh, the Dirk Gently books. Mm -hmm. And if you look, if you if you read the first, I don't know, ten pages of um, <clears throat> Long Dark Tea Time, he describes um, a, a magical, mis mystical, non-existent place that is some of the best uh, literary. English I've ever read, mm -hmm. uh, and he was <clears throat> he was super smart, and a, and I thought of him as a wonderful guy, uh, and and he was um, and as a friend, you know, he would say this and that at a dinner while they were making guacamole at the table, and and it would it would let me see these things live as images, so if they live as images, where do they live? Because I'm not making it up, right. Uh, it feels like it when you start to write and you think, oh, I'm the author. But there's a point where <clears throat> the universe is writing the book. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds maybe a little too squishy, but <laughs> the universe does write the books. You know, we don't write them. We sort of, I don't know, what's the word? We pass them. Mm -hmm. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> horribly biological. <laughs> a little painful uh, as well. But we, but we express them. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. There you go. And we, <clears throat> and we express them. And so... Finding the beauty in it, often, often, and I, in, in my own life, it's every single time, carry with it um, uh, images. And so, you know, I'm surrounded by that. I, I, it goes back to the, you know, the early days of MTV and, uh, and, and the first music video and stuff that I was doing long before Neptune. Mm -hmm. And why I tried to do it a little bit with Neptune, but I just didn't have... I didn't have the crew or the team and the people who thought that way around me at the time. So, and and the few that were that did, we didn't have enough lifting power to get it where it needed to go. Okay. But I I encourage everybody who's thinking about writing a book is to sit down and you know smoke some dope if that's what does it, or drink some scotch if that's what does it, or just sit there stone cold sober and meditate yourself until you're high enough to feel like you don't have a body. <laughs> <laughs> And then look around and see what you see, yeah. because it's fantastic in those planes of thought and planes of manifestation. And every every person that you and I can think up has an actual existence, but that's as far as I can take it because mm -hmm. I know it goes, I know it goes squishy at that point. But it <laughs> it it it, it, it um, you know, and so so did Neptune, and so did and so did every sing, single thing, like the Little Horse Diner. And um, I wrote a really funny passage about, uh, oh gosh, what's the name of the guy who runs the diner and who... Uh, Lee. Uh, Lee, thank you, God. And <clears throat> he has a very distinct look. He has a very distinct accent. And the origins of the diner has a real history to it. And it looks a certain way. And sure enough, as I've driven around, I see that diner from time to time. And when I flip through a book, I'll see somebody with that diner. And I have pictures of it right now. I have, you know, in my mind and in, on paper and so forth that have, um, you know, real history yeah. and, real, uh, and a real existence. I know we're opening philosophical doors that we don't <laughs> want to go through because those rooms are cold and 
feel like a tomb sometimes. Right. But <clears throat> but it, they do have a philosophical reality, philosophical in the uh, in the sense of I think there's a, therefore I am. It, it, they you know they exist because uh, we breathe life into them. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's far as I want to go. Sure. 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 <laughs> well, let me ask you this. I th I think you know. You, there's the characters in the novel um, are key, but I think the setting is just as much a character as Naz or, or Zamora. So I'm, I'm curious. You know how how you think this the background of, of New Mexico and the sort of mysticism that's that's coursing through there. How does that inform the story? You know how does how does that make it unique? Wow. Well, that's you know. <clears throat> I haven't talked to too many people about this book, but that is so salient, Nick. You really, you really caught something there because um, it the, the 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 visuals that go along with what's in there with, within within Neptune are are easily as important as the words. Absolutely. Um, and for me, words are portraits; they're pictures, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> and they each all have an image associated with them, even with the ones that are hopelessly metaphysical and hopelessly non-physical, that, that they, there is an active um, reality to them, an active three-dimensional reality that carries with it a couple of other dimensions that let us get it into time and get it into space and get it into, into the place where r real things exist. With New Mexico, when I got there and I started looking at things, one of the first things that came into mind was uh, Waylock. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I had gone crawling around the old adobes by old, I'm talking about thousands of years mm -hmm. old, um, that were built by the first settlers there. The first, you know, you talk about Native Americans, these guys go back long before that. And. <clears throat> They had these beautiful, like the, the Taos Pueblo. Uh, it's a beautiful Pueblo that's in Taos. And if you go there and you walk around it, you realize these people knew nothing of architecture. And yet the buildings are just architecturally and, and compositionally nearly perfect. I mean, it just, they're so beautiful because of the structure of the building. So I thought, well, you know, you could set something in here as a story, or maybe a, I was thinking music videos at the time, mm -hmm. or maybe you can do a video up here, something you can do. And I went around to New Mexico, and I and I looked. I went down to Silver City, and went off. <clears throat> I took the trail of Billy the Kid, uh, and until he met his demise, uh, Vic and I went out on our motorcycles one week, and we just drove all over the southern part of New Mexico which is why there's so much of New Mexico in it. Mm -hmm. And and also, which is where the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I gotta keep asking for prompts. What's the name of the of the motel that's in the town that he goes down to? Uh, what's the name of the motel or the, uh, or the restaurant that he goes to when uh, when he first sees Nephi scream by on her motorcycle? What's it, does it do you guys remember? Uh, I know what you mean, but I don't remember. Well, anyway, uh, I'll will find it. Melody, look up that. Not right now, honey. Not right now. Just <laughs> when, when I get off the when I get off the phone with Nick, you can send him the name of the diner. It was a something. It wasn't the Little Horse Diner. That's where Lee was, and it was a it was a it was a based on an actual thing, and so is the catwalk that. Uh, um, um, what's his name goes up and falls falls from mm -hmm. four stories uh, when uh, when he's lifted to uh, full rescue by yeah. Neptune herself and <clears throat> and that was something that exists. I went down there and saw it. I had dinner at that that uh, diner and I had and I walked up the catwalk until I thought, man, I, you could fall down here and hurt yourself. And I thought, well, put that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I did, <laughs> and <clears throat> coming up with Waylock itself, I just I just borrowed from the architecture of the Pueblo architecture mm -hmm. or the Pueblo buildings, and I saw in my mind how to put it together. And I tried to describe that in words. I don't know whether I did a good job of it or not, but I'm happy enough with it to leave it. And if I ever were to make a film of this, I would try to find one of these great old Pueblos yeah. that. Uh, 
that still exist thousands of years after they were first built and lived in. It's a magical land. I mean, the whole Southwest just breathes enchantment, you know, land of enchantment, mm -hmm. I should say. And, and it did for me. And Vic and I out there on the motorcycles, you know, riding side by side. She's yeah. a great rider, and so am I. And out there, she she bought a big touring bike to go with me, and <clears throat> we just sucked up the air and the bugs and the rain and the <laughs> hail and everything we drove through, and went to these towns. And um, I can't remember the first town he goes to. I'm so sorry to say, where he goes into the the small diner and orders a cup of coffee and asks the two people there if they've ever heard of Neptune Zamora, mm -hmm. and somebody says, Stun, you're looking for Santa Claus. Right, right. And <clears throat> that, that exists. That town is really there. <laughs> I don't know what the name of it is, but it's really there. And we, we really went in there, and we really had breakfast, and it was really awful. But it was, uh, you know, it was a real thing. Well, it's it's interesting the way that some parts of the story are obviously, as you're saying, very, you know, very real and very grounded. But then at other times, you know, reality really kind of seems to shift, and it becomes just a little like almost surreal you know i i, I felt yeah. like the book to me kind of felt like a a cross between you know like an old epic and and hotel california a little bit because there's a vague you know there's a vague creepiness to it at times yep 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 you're so right and that's all built into the land of new mexico yeah. and really new mexico arizona you know the the, the four states mm -hmm. and um you're it 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 is creepy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I made um, I made it when um, <clears throat> the the uh, the the woman who sells him the trinket, uh, Quithu, uh comes, you know, wandering up to him. You know, you can just imagine what it's like to have a little old lady coming up to you. You'd like some trinkets, <laughs> Mister? These are magic trinkets. You'll be able to fly. <laughs> and you know, you just think, run away, yeah, run yeah, away, yeah. run away. But but after you get past that point and you start listening to what people are saying, you know, like you're looking for Santa Claus, there's a lot to that. Yeah. And a lot of people spend their whole whole life looking for Santa Claus. Yeah. I mean, look at the American Congress. I mean, you've got 400 people in there looking for Santa Claus. Yeah. And until you can practicalize that and make it come true – you're just looking for Santa Claus, yeah. and it's not there's there isn't a Santa Claus, so leave it alone and understand that Mom and Dad got up in the middle of the night, three o'clock, built the electric train in the model farm for you to have to play with. Yeah. Well, that's a fantastic idea to me. So that's what it wasn't a dismissive insult. You're looking for Santa Claus, idiot. Yeah. It was uh, oh, you're looking for Santa Claus because that's exactly what he was looking for. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of what I wanted to ask you about here because where where the character of Nez ends up is not is not what he set out to be. You know, he's he Correct. goes looking for something and he ends up with something different. So yeah. So what do you th you think it's just the you think it's just the idea that he's looking for? Just what what well, is it? What I tried to <clears throat> what I tried to put in there was that he was he was overwhelmed with the woman that he thought was Neptune. Yeah. And so it blocked out a lot of his ability to see how he was straying from the path. Right. Um, and <clears throat> in order to understand when we've started to stray from the path, there has to be some base level of knowledge that every place we go, we're on a path. Mm hmm and we may be making our own path, we may be imagining it, whatever it is, but it's there. Yeah. And and so just stay on the path, even if you're not sure where it's going, or even if you're sure it's not there. And there will come a time when you have to just sit there next to your motorcycle or whatever you're in and contemplate where, where you are. What are you doing? And what happened to uh, Nez was he realized, oh, maybe there's not a Santa Claus, maybe there's not a Neptune, but there's something. Yeah. And that's what I want to find. And that's when he realized it's the music, nitwit. Mm -hmm. And and uh, he, he, if you listen to the music, you will hear, and those, some among us, will see what's in that music. And for me, it... It, 
populates my life and my imagination and frankly makes life worth living. I mean, that's where I swing from those to those. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you're right. It does go, it does get airborne from time to time. And you get up a little high and you start to think, oh, I'm too high. <laughs> if I fell from here, I'd break every bone right. in my body. But you're never going to fall. Yeah. Be as long as you keep very close to the fact that I'm always on the path. I'm always heading towards the light because the light uh, is continuously drawing me to it. Well, thank, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. I, I think that I think the book is an excellent choice for a book club because just all the issues that have that have come up as we've talked about it today are are what really makes book clubs successful. You know, when there's so many oh, different thanks. there's so many little different threads you can pull on. You know, there's there's so many yeah. elements of the book that you can say, <laughs> let's just talk about this for a while. So uh, I, uh -huh. I certainly wish you all the best with your uh, the, the book you. club that you guys are doing through Facebook, because I think uh, I think you're going to get yeah. a lot of interesting discussion that way. Well, it's already started. You know, Melody started it and and suddenly we had like hundreds of members. Yeah. And all of them have something interesting to say. And and I can't wait to see it to uh, get better. She's she's a great moderator and she steers it the right way. And I think the fact that she chose Neptune. Uh, you know, tells you what the club is about. You know, we're, we are in the skies and I want to stay there. And I do that. I try to do that with my live music and with everything. So the fact that you picked up on that so quick was really made this a great conversation, Nick, and I appreciate it. Well, I do too. Thanks so much. You can find the book club at Michael Nesmith's Video Ranch 3D on Facebook. They have prepared discussion questions, an interactive video where readers can chat with each other, and the author himself. Absolutely. As he said, it's already going. It's already very active. I've mm -hmm. stopped in a few times, caught, caught one of the first live video. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. So I encourage you to go in and check this out. Uh, you, can, you can get the book at VideoRanch3D.com. Locals, of course, we also have it here in the library collection. But you can get a signed copy from VideoRanch3D.com. And outside of that, it's just a cool site. It's got uh, music, memorabilia, just a anything you could want. Uh, if you're looking for some new music, uh, Mike Nesmith's latest release, uh, Live at the Troubadour, the first national band, Redux, is there. Uh, it's excellent. My friend Steve and I caught this live show, and it was in Phoenixville. And the album, I think, really captures just the, the experience of, of being there. It's a great live album, so I encourage you to check that out as well. And fans in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, it's a little far away for us. but Yeah. Uh, they can catch the Mike and Mickey show. Uh... Throughout June. Throughout June, yeah. live in the month of June. Eric and I caught this tour uh, last summer yes. in Cleveland. Yeah. So much fun. It was great to see live. So if you're anywhere near these concerts, I, I really encourage you to go and check these out. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for tuning in today. I want to thank uh, Melody over at Video Ranch for helping us set this out. Thanks, Melody. Uh, and of course, thank you to Michael Nesmith for taking the time to sit down and yeah. talk with us. It was a great discussion. Yeah. And if you enjoyed this interview and want to listen to our full episodes of the All The Book Show, you can find us at SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you find your podcasts. And you can listen to us talk about books in general. Yeah, uh, all sorts of stuff. We have other author interviews. Yeah. We have uh, lots of different segments. We go over and see what's popular in the world of books. So yeah. uh, check uh, you us can, out. You can also find us on Twitter at All The Book Show. We always like to have a good uh, conversation on there. So come yeah. find us. Check us out. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next week.